Welcome to Digital Oil and Gas with Jeffrey Can. I'm Jeffrey. Digital Oil and Gas looks at the impact of digital technology on the global oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Can on Twitter or at jeffreycan.com. NFTs and the oil and gas industry. A non-fungible token or NFT for a digital work of art sold recently for several million in cryptocurrency, which raises the question of how NFTs might apply to oil and gas. Why we collect things. I was dusting the mantle over the fireplace this week because in the lockdown I'm using my time wisely. A year of general household malaise has allowed the dust to settle into a thick and depressing layer and it was long past time to deal with it. Our mantle is where we have a collection of stone carvings from our various travels, and as I picked up each one to give it a wipe down, I felt a slight twinge of nostalgia for the time when we purchased these pieces. This one was from a trip to Iqaluit, where we almost got lost on the ice flows. And that one is a rescue from the basement of an art gallery in Calgary. And that one was from a one-eyed jade carver from Prehend over Cat Street in Hong Kong. Of all species, humans have a curious fascination for the unusual and the exotic. And many of us are great collectors of things. Collecting starts very early in life, with Barbie dolls, beach glass, stones, Lego, and Pokemon cards. And that's just my kids. Generations have their collections. I once collected postage stamps and baseball cards, but my mother collected teacups and cranberry-colored glass. It should be no surprise that today's generation, the digital generation, will collect digital things. And sure enough, a recent news story caught my attention as a digital artist sold a montage of his digital works at auction for $69 million in cryptocurrency in the form of a non-fungible token or NFT. What? Let's just break this apart, beginning with the term fungibility. An asset that is fungible as a perfect substitute of the same value. A $20 bill can be exchanged for another 20 or two tens, or four fives, or twenty ones, or two hundred dimes, or any combination of bills and coins that adds up to twenty dollars. Gold, casino chips, and a company's stock certificates are examples of fungible assets. As commodities, petroleum products like gasoline are fungible. Your gasoline-powered car can accept fuel from any gasoline station, regardless of the brand of fuel or where it was made. Methane and propane are 100% fungible. The burner tip in your furnace doesn't care whether the methane originated in Canada or in Australia. Every molecule is identical. Crude oil is um, sort of fungible. Not all crudes are alike because crudes vary considerably in their chemical composition and specific gravity. So one barrel of crude cannot be readily substituted for another in all instances. Traders compensate for the lack of perfect substitution by grouping crudes into grades and agreeing a price differential between the various grades. The oil industry is just one huge exercise in taking a non-fungible asset and making it thoroughly fungible and available to the widest possible market. Fungible assets conveniently have quantifiable values that readily enable transacting. I can easily convert my $20 bill into rubles, gold, casino chips, or Bitcoin. Assets that are non-fungible have some unique characteristics that make them non-substitutable for other assets in the same asset class. The stone carvings on my mantle, artwork in general, and buildings are all non-fungible assets. I have a house, and Michael Jordan has a house, but they're not even close in value. Oil and gas wells are non-fungible assets in the same in asset class, but they're not substitutes. Fungibility extends to the virtual world, too. Digital fungible assets include cryptocurrency. One Bitcoin can be swapped for another Bitcoin and loyalty points. We probably don't realize it, but we're all merchandising and fungible digital assets as collectors of air miles and petrol points. Which, of course, brings us to the curious asset class of digital non-fungible assets, which can include trademarks, digital art, software code, videos and movies, ringtones, GIFs, means, digital land and video games, digital weapons, digital makeup, and virtual costumes. I mean, could you ever have imagined that these assets would actually have value? In 2019, I visited the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, and I was surprised to discover that the museum encouraged you to take photos of the art collection with your phone. 
My photo of a piece of their art is not a substitute for the original, and the value of the original is not diminished because of the existence of the photo, and in fact, the photo might even encourage others to visit the museum for themselves. The twisty bit about non-fungible digital assets is that they can be infinitely and perfectly copied. Unlike my imperfect photo of famous works by Rembrandt on my phone, and until now, we've not had a mechanism to distinguish the copies from the original. That's where the token comes in. The token is a certificate of ownership for a non-fungible asset that is stored immutably on a blockchain ledger. The non-fungible asset can be real, such as real estate, or digital, such as a GIF. The token can then be bought and sold, like other assets, and through the power of smart contracts, new functionality can be delivered, such as limiting the number of copies to be made, or building an expiry date, or linking it to other digital assets. The token lives on in one of many of the blockchain databases out there, meaning that the asset owner may not need to stand up any proprietary infrastructure to bring an NFT into existence. NFTs can play a disintermediation role. Via the blockchain database, the buyer and the seller can connect with each other without the services of an intermediary, such as a gallery in the case of art. It's at this point that you're probably saying, I don't get it. Well, from a collector's standpoint, the part to get is whether you believe that the first instance of a non-fungible digital asset can retain value for a collector, even though the digital asset can be infinitely and perfectly copied. The answer is probably yes, if there are collectors who, for whatever reason, believe it can. From a business standpoint, the part to get is whether you can imagine creative ways to monetize intellectual property beyond licensing a copy, selling the rights, or using the services of an agent. For an industry devoted to turning non-fungible assets into fungible ones at scale, it's probably not obvious where there might be a role for a non-fungible token. But, like many technologies that come first to other industries, NFTs will eventually find a home in oil and gas. As usual, it will likely take a little longer for the industry to catch up. But here's a few examples that I think could be realized. Engineering content. Engineering designs are instances of pure intellectual property. The designs exist only in software as a collection of data points that work in tandem with the software to yield the diagrams for making mechanical things. Examples include instructions for 3D printed objects, designs for refinery processes, or process models for carrying out some specific transformation. Engineers working in oil and gas are constantly inventing new ways to improve yields, reduce waste and energy, de-bottleneck processes, and all of these efforts result in fresh content. The content could be recorded as an NFT, and with smart contracts, the use of the content could be licensed in new creative ways such as on a per-unit basis, or perhaps by subscription. Another model is fractionalized ownership. A novel business model, supported by software, is a non-fungible digital asset. Using a token to hold the original design in the code creates the possibility of fractional ownership of the token. This can unlock new mechanisms for the funding of novel business ideas and concepts. For example, say a service company wants to create a cloud-enabled machine learning solution to minimize methane em eventing on gas wells and tokenizes the algorithm. This allows investors to own a share in the algorithm. Green financing may come to the industry. And finally, how about data holdings? If there's one thing oil and gas has in abundance and growing every day, it's data. Data assets are non-fungible and digital, and thus have tokenization possibilities. For example, much subsurface data is unused and unexploited because the industry lacks the resources to tackle it all at once and devotes its precious, limited resources to only the most promising plays. The balance, likely 80% or better, could be auctioned using NFTs for crowdsourced analytic purposes. As usual, new technology, or in this case, a 12-year-old technology with a relatively new use, has its limitations and considerations. The regulatory environment needs to catch up with these digital natives. Smart contracts are neither smart, nor are they legally contracts, and in many respects must still be tested in litigation. Non-fungible digital assets create valuation and taxation questions, not to mention questions of ownership, succession, inheritance, and eventual disposal. 
How do you insure a non-fungible digital asset? And in which jurisdiction should you register an NFT? Watch this space. So in conclusion, it's as usual the digital natives in the creative space that found the way to monetize an infinitely copyable, non-fungible digital asset. But I expect it's the oil and gas industry who will figure out how to use NFTs in the real world. Meanwhile, I'll be dusting the mantle, admiring my collectible, non-fungible real estate assets, and contemplating if this blog site could be structured as an NFT and sold for millions. <laughs>